everyone, it's Jordan Robertson with Benzinga, and joining me today is Dennis Ferris, CEO at Dragonfly Energy. Thank you so much for being here today, Dennis. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. So to kick things off, who is Dragonfly Energy and what do you do? We're a lithium ion battery technology company, and we're, we're pretty comprehensive when it comes to a battery company because we do everything from fundamental research on cell manufacturing and chemistry from the individual lithium ion cells to assembly of lithium ion battery packs to the marketing and sales of these packs into a variety of different uh, storage markets. And in such a rapidly growing market with regard to lithium batteries, what makes DFE unique? It really is the how, how comprehensive we are because there's a lot of technology companies out there that are working on new battery chemistries that don't have any revenue. You know, we've had revenue now for six, seven years. Um, but on top of that, our focus is pretty unique as well, which is for a battery company, we're focused on storage. We're not really interested or as interested in electric vehicles and propulsion. We really are interested in storage applications. Um, right now, what we've been very successful at is displacing lead acid batteries for consumer storage applications. But ultimately, what we're driving towards is supporting the grid and providing grid storage to allow for more renewable energy on the grid and ultimately reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. Amazing. And solid state is a buzzword we've been hearing a lot about lately. How does your product stand out and how is it that you've developed a completely non-flammable cell? So we're that's not on the market yet. So what we've developed is a process to make lithium ion cells and we can make any type of lithium ion cell. Um, we basically dry powder coat electrodes, the anode and the cathode of the cell. But what we've, what we've discovered using this process is that we can dry powder coat an entire cell that has a solid state electrolyte. And what that means is that the electrolyte itself is not flammable. And I'm sure you've heard a lot about uh, the, the dangers of lithium ion batteries associated with the flammability and, and the fires that they can cause in electric vehicles and in things like skateboards and cell phones. Ultimately, that's because of the fact that the liquid electrolyte inside the cell can react with oxygen and um, basically go into what's called thermal runaway. If you replace that liquid electrolyte with a completely solid electrolyte, the way that we are able to do with our powder coating processes, you no longer have that reaction. So it doesn't matter if there's a short circuit or something else that happens to create um, some sort of, uh, of spark or, or high current event, the electrolyte won't catch on fire. And that's what makes it so much safer. And ultimately what we'd like to do is bring this technology to the market where we deploy large systems in people's homes in buildings, in every grid tied structure, so that you don't have the liability associated with the flammability, but you still have a lot of storage on the grid to be able to accommodate more intermittent renewable energy like solar and wind. Absolutely. Well, we're certainly looking forward to that. So what problems do your solutions address? It's really the intermittency issue. What we address is if you get your electricity from the sun, the sun shines on the solar panels and creates electricity, but when it's not, it's not shining, you don't make electricity anymore. So you have batteries to store the electricity when it's being produced and then delivered when you're using it. And it doesn't matter when the sun is shining, as long as it's shining enough to be able to accommodate your energy needs. What the storage does is it provides that buffer between when the electricity is being produced and when it's being used. So we've already demonstrated on a smaller scale in RVs and in boats where electricity is being produced when you're driving, for example, from the alternator, if you have solar panels on the roof, um, or when you're plugged into shore. And it's being used when you're off grid, when you're basically camping you know, somewhere remote. And the batteries are there to store the electricity when you make it and deliver it when you need it. And it's something we've been very successful at demonstrating at that consumer level and we are intent on making this more prevalent in the stationary uh, applications, especially associated with larger scale distributed grid storage. Now, Dennis, I want to take a second and ask a question for the investors. What's the potential market size for your products and future technologies? Well, we had the fortune of getting into a market right off the bat that's pretty big. So if you look at our, our core markets now that we actively sell into, which is the, uh, the RV market, the boat market and the off-grid storage market where we're basically displacing lead acid batteries. That's a $12 billion annual TAM. 
if you look at all the markets where lead acid batteries are dominating for storage applications, now this will include things like data centers and work trucks and emergency vehicles. Now we're talking an $85 billion TAM. So just storage for lead acid battery replacement are large markets. But when you expand this to the future markets of grid storage, because ultimately we're going to want to support the grid with enough of an energy buffer from batteries or other storage mechanisms to be able to accommodate more, more wind and solar. Now we're talking a trillion dollar market. I mean, one day backing up the American grid is a trillion dollars worth of batteries. So it's not that it's going to be all batteries, but we're talking an enormous market, and it's something that's going to be necessary moving into the future for our energy security. And speaking of the future, what is the importance of domestic battery production, and what are DFE's plans for that? Well, you know, we have a, a, a bad track record in the United States of being very innovative and developing ways to produce our own energy and then outsourcing it and becoming dependent on foreign countries that sometimes are adversaries. So obviously, it's a matter of national security. We want to be able to produce our own energy, produce the infrastructure to deliver energy to our population. And so we need domestic supply and production of the entire uh, chain from basically mining the lithium resource that we have here in the United States, producing cathode materials and, and the raw materials that go into batteries, making the cells, making the packs, and then delivering it. And then finally, at the end of life, reclaiming those raw materials through recycling uh, processes. So once we have that closed loop, we're a very sustained energy economy. We don't rely on potentially foreign adversaries. So it really is a matter of economic growth, and national security. It's just really important that we take control of our, of our uh, energy independence. And, and it's something that can happen globally. There's lithium globally, but ultimately we want to be able to be self-sufficient when it comes to critical, um, to, to, to critical energy needs. And last question for you here. What's a key takeaway investors should know about Dragonfly Energy? Investors should know that we are the most comprehensive a technology company. So we are a technology company. We innovate, we file patents. We have a very robust and valuable patent portfolio spanning the production of cells to the design of packs to the ultimately the entire system. While at the same time, we have healthy revenues and we've been growing since we went to market in early 2017. So we have a track record we can execute and we have a uh, an innovative spirit that's going to create a very positive and advantageous large upside. We've got a very bright future and a track record to prove it. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. That's all I have for today. We appreciate all the insights and hope to have you back real soon. Thank you, Jordan.